Have a little fun at Ron's tonight. Made him make dinner. Of course, we brought to everything, but yeah, he made dinner. It was good. <laughs> Brooke and I relaxing in the hot tub. And those guys are laying. The thumps on the logs sit out there. Dinner with Ron. Now we're on the way home. So it looks like Highway 219 looking to the north and a little peak toward Portland. Portland's that direction on the other side of the hill over there. And yeah, I know it's skipping around. It's thick as at 9.30 at night. Smoke in the air off in the distance. Clouds up close. I just kind of thought you might want to see that. Add a little something something to little different. Try to get a little sunset. Is that a bicycle still here? trees in the way. Yeah. And more trees in the way. Got the sun trying to peek through over there. I'm hoping the sprinklers still moving. It's up here at 10 o'clock last night, trying to figure out why they weren't moving. Neither one of them was. And that one had, well, when I checked it, it had more than enough pressure, but it wasn't moving. I don't know if we're getting something gummed up on the, in the turbine or what. I had to bump it a little bit, and it started going. And I got up here too far, can't see it, but up on the hill is kind of a repeat of yesterday morning on the far ridge. Now I'm going to see, I don't know why I parked back that far, I'm going to see why this one isn't doing anything. I shut it off last night, and our soaker hose there, doing a good job of getting this wet, and then it's hitting that cow path and splitting both ways, so we got a nice wet spot down in the bottom. Is what it is. That's well flood irrigated. If we had flat ground, we could flood irrigate. Sometimes that wouldn't be bad. And then you wonder what people are doing parked along the road. Oh well, it's still moving. Good thing. I got totally soaked trying to work on that one. Do something with that soaker hose. And there you can see up there. It's raining on top. Being it's raining that direction and over that way, it might come through here. Uh, that one, I think the belt is too stretched out. I've never been able to figure how they run it because there's no adjustment to the belt because nothing can move. Everything's mounted solid to the frame. So I guess we got to try to find a new belt. That ought to be fun because it's a little tiny flat belt, about five eighths of an inch wide. And the vehicle parked along the road ain't along the road. It's actually in the field over there. Why? Because they're out there spraying again. Now, I don't know if you can hear it or not, but it's about a 20 mile an hour wind coming towards us. Sure as hell better not end up with a dead strip along the pasture over there. I'm assuming they're spraying glyphos again. That's what they apparently used last time. I still don't know what they used last fall. We were never uh, privy to that information when asked. All I know is it stank. And once again, then the wind blew this way, and it ended up with about six feet along the line fence over there that it didn't get sick and die, but it sure stunted the growth on it. So I kind of wonder if it wasn't glyphos, because it can be used as a growth inhibitor, and overspray will do that. But like I said, I have no idea what they used. Anyway, 
Let's see if I can find a belt. Probably can't find one. Probably got to get one from was it Switzerland or somewhere Aust Austria? I don't know. I think it's Austria. Been a day, but it's pretty much over with. I just painted the caps on these ones we replaced, and that's the one with the brand new cap. And of course, you know it wasn't painted; it was half rusted in the box. Paint them now, and tomorrow when they're good and dry, I'll take a paint pen and mark when they were replaced. And the one we didn't replace, I did the same thing to these others too. Um, I took the nut off and took the washer out because the washer is just big enough you can't get into the bearing. Stuck a needle in and put as much grease in as I could. And that's the one I decided to replace and that's the one we didn't. So I'll just mark that it was checked this particular time of year. And the little traveler, I think it needs a new drive belt. Freaking little, like 16th inch thick, half inch wide flat belt. So at the moment, it's out there running. You just see it. Uh, I'll go out there. Well, probably as soon as I get done talking to you, I'll go back out and hand crank that sucker in. Got to shut it off to do that because that hose leaks so bad. You get so soaked it ain't funny. And uh, let it run for a few more hours. And the other one should be almost in. Then I can move it. I sped it up a little bit so I can get it moved tonight rather than shutting it off at midnight you know so and did a little modifications on the haymore see if you can hear me while I'm doing this see if I can lose that basket off the front it's just sitting there it's actually a little tall for this that sucks because my plan was to strap it on the front it actually fits perfect I figured out what to do on the drive I just can't find the materials I need. Story of my life, right? Can't win for losing with that kind of stuff. But another issue we had was the flap lever. You're supposed to be able to easily move it. It's all the higher I can go with it at the moment. But it's supposed to move easy like that. There's a bushing inside there. That sucker was so solid it wasn't funny. I had to drive it out with a short handle sledge. Then I took it into an eighth drill bit and run it through the piece on the handle. Got it cleaned out. Then I put the bushing in the lathe and turned a little off of it. It's got grease on it now, but the reason I can't raise it now is that zerk sticks out too far. So I ordered some needle zerks. They'll only stick out about my fingernail and that'll let it clear, I hope. That's not like it's gotta get greased every time you grease the damn thing. That gets greased when we start the season and gets greased when we end the season, it's all it needs. But it was to the point where I was having a hard time moving it and number one couldn't move it at all. Now it's fixed. I got my workout. The hand crank. That's up on the tongue up there. So you can crank it in by hand. And that sucker's moving now. It wouldn't move before. I don't know what the hell. You gotta put it back in gear after you hand crank it, otherwise it's gonna hose will go slack on the reel and make a mess. Kinda pisses me off that it's moving now. But that's okay. It can finish this on its own. I don't care. Because I really don't want to have to crank it in again. And that one over there. Hope it's still moving. I'm going to guess it's got about another 
hour, which will be about right. And yeah, it's still moving. I can see the reel moving. You got to look really close. We'll let the cows back out on the lane so they can come into that piece where there's nothing to eat. So they'll come up here in that corner right there because it'll be in the shade in a little bit. These uh, cooler mornings have definitely not been cooler afternoons. Humid as hell and up into the 80s. Get rid of that soaker hose and get a real hose on there will make a nice difference. You kind of look for hoses. The inexpensive ones you find all day long. You can buy by the foot or by the 20 foot or whatever. But they're only rated to 65 pounds. I guarantee there's at least 70 pounds on that sucker right now. Probably more like 75 anyway. Especially since this is right at the end of the bigger line underneath. This is getting way more pressure to it anyway than that one is. And that one's running right at 68 pounds earlier. Without this one running, it was running in just over 90 pounds last night. Uh, I got one more move there, which will be right where that brown strip is in the middle of the screen. That's where the old fence used to run, more or less. Run it about there, and that'll catch the headland on the hay field right there, and finish the rest of that field there off. And after I get it moved over there, I'll be nice to the cows. They can go back on that three-corner piece. Have a little bit of better grass for a little while. I'd really love to put them back down there in the bottom again, but I just isn't growing yet. I mean, it's greening up a little bit, but not much. I think we need to give it a few more days. The lane here that they didn't clean up before, and that piece will give it that time. And yeah, once it's over here, there's seven days. Go from that end down to that end. And mom's kind of to the idea maybe we try to get a second cut off both these fields. I'm good with that. I mean, it ain't going to be much, but between the two of them, it'll be at least enough for her horses. And a whole lot better than what we already put up, I hope. Anyway, I'm going to let you go. And then I'll put this up and see you all in the comment section. Thanks for watching.